some of those folks. All right. Okay. So officially live on everywhere now. On Mars, on SIP2, all over the place where they can see these great beings. All this information is going out everywhere. The whole universe, the galaxy is, <laughs> is, is a, gazing upon us now. And um, welcome everybody. It's your brozo. Another, another night with amazing individuals. Um, honored to have this great guest. Um, as always, you know, if y'all haven't already, pick up, go to yourbrozo.com, pick up the book, Living and Leave, Bicultural Living and Leaving the World of Illusions. My journey of becoming aware and awakened as a melanated being on this planet, this matrix. Um, and as I always tell people, this, this, this uh, platform is for the people that get it. You know what I mean? All, these people on the planet that realize who they are now, the people that get it, that's what this, this podcast is for, okay? And there's also to uplift the melanated beings that are starting to remember again what we've lost, okay? I'm done with my spill. I have a great powerful sister with us right now, and I'm gonna go ahead and let her introduce herself and we'll go from there. Peace. Uh, my name is Akua Agusi Ali Wulvan, and I am a mother, number one, most importantly. Um, and then I'm also a book author and a book publisher. I am many things that are associated with a writer. Um, I've started to dabble into screenwriting, um, producing, co-producing a documentary, things of that nature. Um, so I have six books. Here are two of them. So we'll probably get into these tonight. Um, one is a math book. The other one is a children's biography about Madam C.J. Walker, the actual story, not the Netflix version. I think it's important to say because the Netflix version, um, I just wasn't feeling, wasn't factual, um, wasn't flattering. So it's important to me to say that you can set that straight. I have other titles. I have a children's book about Marcus Garvey, Queen and Zynga. Um, and then I also have a t-shirt line, wrappedinculture.com. So that's who I am. <laughs> so my okay. phone's over All here, right. my laptop's over here. So <laughs> if you guys are seeing that. That's okay. <laughs> You, yeah, you got the you got the nice the ill side profile thing going on IG right now. <laughs> it's straightforward going this way. Um, all right. So when I first met you, you told me some very interesting stories about how you dealt with. Uh, um, you were heavy into activism. I can't remember what it specifically was. I just remember you telling one story, and mm -hmm. after you told my story, I was like, whoa. But what got you involved in activism and what exactly was it, you know, that you were doing? Gotcha. You know, it's interesting. I thought of that when you were doing your introduction and you were saying basically that your book is about your plight into consciousness, um, into enlightenment. And yeah, so I, I thought about my own. So I like to say that it began sometime in high school, um, maybe freshman sophomore year, my mother um, got married. And so I inherited an uncle through that marriage, um, Roland Freeman, Ro Ronald and Roland Freeman, um, but Roland in particular, and I gained, you know, we, we got really close. Every time I went to LA to visit family, we would stop by my aunt and uncle's house and I would kind of fall back and he started telling me these stories. I didn't really understand the magnitude of him being a panther at that time. Um, I just loved his energy, loved his spirit. And I felt like finally someone understood me. I had these ideas, I had these questions and my parents couldn't answer them. Society wasn't, you know, 
supply me with any answers. School definitely wasn't, was only making it even more confusing. So, you know, finally here was this elder that could now answer these questions and, you know, just kind of fuel my fighter spirit. So that's where it kind of started. You know, I went back, I would go back to school, um, conversation, you know, just kind of changing a bit. So I noticed that it wasn't a common thing for my age. So it took a while for me to like find my tribe tribe, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I won't forget my my stepfather and I went to see Malcolm X in the movie theater and we was like, done, we're Muslim. Are you kidding me? What? Like we are Malcolm X juniors. So that was like the second thing where I was like, man, I can't, I don't fit in. You know what I mean? I don't fit in. It's like a regular teen and mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this energy and these questions that I ask, you know, in school. But I was just like, there's something, right? So as I graduate, you know, I used to go to the mall, like most teenagers used to do back then. Now that's like unheard of, right? Because who even goes to the mall? But um, I used to go to the mall and there was a store and there was an elder brother there who, you know, would kind of just talk about some, some similar things that I was interested in. And he told me about a study group they had. So I was like, okay, I want to go. And he'd be like, nah, you're not ready. You're not ready. You're not ready. And I'm like, how am I not ready? We're talking about the same stuff you're saying. You're talking about in a study group. Like, okay, I know I'm fresh out of high school, but I'm ready. So finally deemed me as actually ready and let me come to study group, go to study group. And I just fall in love. Like, oh my God, this is my tribe. You know what I mean? Talking about weapons class and, you know, just activism and, and everything I was interested in. So I was, Done. And then, of course, I came and found me a little crush. So that was really it, right? Um, now, the thing that was really awesome that connected kind of my two worlds is my dad used to teach me how to make bullets and go to the range prior to all of that. So when I went to the, um, you know, became a part of the family of this organization and we were teaching the community gun classes, it was just like, okay. That's already my passion anyway. So here it is accepted. You know, it's not looked at as being a tomboy or weird or anything. So I was able to excel in that way. So um, then I was, you know, selected to get my scuba diving license out of our family. So I went ahead and pursued that. Um, Was able to work at, we had an African-centered school. So that's where some of my teaching started. Um, We just, we touched a lot of, a lot of a lot of bases, things that we need in our community, we would just invent, we would just do. So we were automatically um, becoming like our, our areas, I would say watchers. I don't want to say police, but you know what I mean? We we were known for having these big black trucks mm-hmm. that, you know, we were just, we weren't like riding, like trying to patrol. We were just handling our business and people would notice us. So it was an interesting time. Like I really knew I was I was really in some shit is when like we used to jog. We were heavy on working out. We had to work out, you know, probably I mean, it was every day, but there were certain days where we did it like as a family, you did it as a couple, you did it as sisters, et cetera, et cetera. And you did it by yourself. And I was jogging by myself and um the the pigs, the police or whatever flipped me off. I didn't even recognize them. I had no run in with them. They just recognized me as being affiliated and flipped me off. And I was like, yo, this is, this is real. I was like, yeah, this is crazy. So, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't harass me. They just were annoyed by the presence, right? So I started going through that as a, on a regular basis. You know, they started calling my phone. Um, the mate I had at the time used to always tell me, like, don't talk about anything serious on the phone. Don't talk about anything sensitive, anything serious. You know, they'll try to play us against each other, play on your emotions. We went through something. I slipped talking on the phone about it. And I kid you not, somebody called saying they were like from a a community group and they were trying to get donations for the exact same thing we were going through. And it wasn't a common thing. So I was like, yo, this is the movie stuff. But I mean, movies are are for the most part based off of reality, right? But being young at that point, I was like 19. You know what I mean? Just not really seeing the full validity of what I was connected to at that time. It was just a way of life. It's just what I knew. You know what I mean? That's that's what I did. That was my daily thing. I went to, you know, in the Matrix at 9 to 5. As soon as I got off at 2 o'clock, I came to the school and started teaching at our school until it was time to go train and did it all over again. So 
you know, I didn't see anything wrong. I didn't see how that could be a threat to the establishment whatsoever. Mm. So I'm like, why would they tap our phones? Why would they be harassing us? I don't understand. So that was um, the beginning. Um, I eventually was um, given the blessing of, of leading um, like the first level of gun class that we had. So that was really dope. So later when, you know, we decided to, you know, the, the group eventually just kind of, as a lot of our unfortunate um, organizations do, just kind of grow in different directions. So I continued teaching um, weapons in particular until I got pregnant with my son. Then I decided I didn't want to handle weapons while I was pregnant. So at that point, I kind of leaned more into the book writing. Um, because at first it's just, you know, I might I wrote poetry and I created curriculum like for the school that we had. Um, somewhat, I'll say, definitely not on the level I'm doing it now. It was more like reworking pre-existing curriculum to make it a little more, a little more African-centered. So anyhow, um, I just kind of started focusing on the things that my son would need. So that's how you know, I started writing the book on Garvey and then Madam C.J. Walker, et cetera, et cetera. Because he was recognizing Spider-Man at a ridiculous rate, like miles and miles, It'd be like 20 miles. He's like, Spider-Man. And I was like, okay, no. <laughs> if you didn't recognize Spider-Man like that and idolize him, I think you're ready to learn about some real idols. So that's what um, led yeah. me to just initially uh, just a manuscript for him, something that I could use to teach off of. And then mm. someone saw it and was like, you should publish that. So I was like, okay, I'll look into it. I looked into it and the response was too good from non-Africans. And I was like, okay, there's a reason why they're trying to get this book from me this quickly. I'm like, they probably want to control the narrative. So I was like, okay, I need to look into publishing mm -hmm. it myself. So I was lucky enough to know someone who got published um, by a major, um, you know, a major publishing company, someone who self-published. So I kind of observed the both of them, weighed the pros and cons, and, you know, learned the lessons through their experience and then decided to go ahead and do my own and then open it up to publish other people who may be in the same situation as well. So I just, you know, just workshops, research, um, conferences so that I could learn, you know, what I needed to so I could, so it could look polished and professional. So I eventually end up moving and I, because originally this is in the Oakland area. So then I get to LA um, and I made it a point to not lean on my uncle too much when I got there. So at that point, you know, I already, um, you know, had started my activism, you could say um, career or, or whatnot interest. And I didn't want, initially when I came to LA, I just, even, you know, just wanted to focus on the books and, and other stuff. You know what I mean? I kind of still had that bad taste in my mouth from my experience. I'm like, I'm just going to work alone. So I started by throwing a workshop for children in L.A. I didn't know that that would be considered a big deal there. So I didn't know, you know, people, I guess, maybe had thrown things. The turnout was cool, but it wasn't on the scale of this particular workshop. So because I'm just running around just trying to make it happen so i'm not really looking back at the full magnitude of like wow there are all these families here enjoying you know these workshops and so people started coming to me saying they want to work together they want to do more workshops and events so that's kind of how i got introduced to the um the community in la so you know i was still you know a little shy about it but I would go to a couple events and little by little, I just, I found myself wrapped up again through passion and ooh, yeah, it was, it was, it got heavy. So that's like some of the, I guess the stories that you and I got into um, where eventually it got to the point because initially what happened is I went to an event and I saw where security was slipping a bit. So I was like, hey, just so you guys know, you know what I mean? Is these folks in the van watching you all and somebody came and collected a can even that you put down, like 
you're slipping. You know what I mean? With what you're into, you know, your security needs to be a little tighter. They were like, whoa, we need you. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm just letting you know what I saw. Never mind, you know, all that. I'm not interested. I'm a mom. I'm focused on that. I'm doing books. And they were like, oh, we actually need someone who has some expertise in the publishing because we're working on something similar. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. That led to, you know, weapons class and then weapons class led to me being linked to that uh, group of people. And um, it just kind of evolved from there. So, you know, eventually it, it got to the point where a sister and I were out coming from a panel. I was invited to, um, to discuss a documentary. Actually, his brother JR from um, Bayview News in the Bay Area. So he was in town in LA. He asked me to come sit on the panel. On the way back, police pull, you know, the sister and I over, she was driving and they just start harassing us. So it gets to the point where we decide that, you know, we want to go ahead and file a claim. So to me, I was like, okay, you know what? I find this opportunity to create like a new boundary of what we're of allowance right we're not going to wait until we get murdered to say don't touch us we're going to reset it right here with you touching them like they you know took off they held my arms and un unbuttoned like this jean jacket i had it was more like a jean shirt took my id out my wallet took off my head wrap like just and i'm a passenger but the fact that i was recording what they were doing with the driver pissed them off and I wasn't afraid to piss them off even more. So this is them trying to intimidate me. So anyhow, I'm like, you know, I don't want it to get to the point where it's like, okay, get your hand. Cause they weren't really attacking our children on the level they're doing now. They weren't really, you know, the elders so much. It wasn't just like anything, anything goes at that point. It was predominantly, you know, It's real interesting that you brought that up because I don't know if we talk, talked about it when we talked about that situation. Because I remember when I was in my first band here in Atlanta, and like we, um, you know, you know me, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, spit some controversial stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just topic matter, trying to wake folks up, and you know, um, this one time I was at, um, I was at my uh, Crojo. You know, and I was gone for like a week, right? And then when I came back, my sensei was like, you know, and when I came in, there was a man walked in with a beret hat on, right? Like an army beret hat on. And I, you know, I didn't, you know what I mean? I mean, I paid attention to him, but I was like, you know, oh, he's here, right? You know, but what ended up happening was he left and my, you know, that guy's been coming here for a week, just sitting here and leaving, you know, just like, really? You know, and then later on when I'm finished, I go to my car and this joker pulled out a knife on me. 
and try to stab me, yeah, me up, you know what I'm saying? And I was just like, you know, I'm just saying all that. That's when I knew, like, you know, all this is real. People, you know, people think that it's like, um, you know, fun and games when you when you try to, you know, go against the grain, you know, you know, or um, and had there's no, you know, watching, there's no, you know, consequences, or whatever way, or there's no repercussions, but, you know, that's as far as as far as from the truth as it can possibly, you know, what I'm saying because. This whole system, as we know, is just completely, you know, against anything that's progressive, you know what I'm saying, and um, pro progressive for us. Mm -hmm. Dealing with what became a universal revolution, and that's what they've been afraid of all this time, is something catching here and then spreading everywhere, and then that's what happened. Like they they knew that that was very possible, and the thing is, like in California, where a lot of things incubate, they they can't afford to have it pop. I mean, you know, gang banging started there, and that caught all over the world. Like they know, they do mm -hmm. know, know that if um, something becomes trendy, especially in California, or you know, now I'm in Atlanta, I can even see Atlanta having the influence that it could catch on in places and they can lose mm -hmm. control of the narrative. So yeah, it's absolutely yeah. a threat. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, you know, yeah, I learned it, that. It, it, um, um, and I didn't gain, you know, it's like a, on one end, um, I'm, I'm fighting this idea of our existence and trying to come up, you know, with some other developmental solutions for our people. And on the other end, um, I'm fighting us. You know what I mean? Because people are like, are you doing that because mm -hmm. it's genuine mm -hmm. or because it looks cool? I'm like, does it look cool? Because I don't even notice that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm doing the work. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm losing money. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm passing yeah, up other yeah, opportunities yeah, yeah, to keep myself available yeah. for this. And you think this mm -hmm. looks good? I'm like, mm -hmm. it don't look good to my family. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what you're yeah. talking about. But people who... Mm -hmm. are just, you know what I mean, surface level and they see things different and they're just looking at the reaction. You know what I mean? They just, they didn't see it like that way and it would just pose just a, a bit of a problem. So, you know what I mean? I mean, and I'm, I'm not the only one. I, I know plenty of men and women have gone through that when you are striving to to just help. You know what I mean? In, in, in other situations, not even just revolutionary settings. So, you know, I just decided I'm going to move different. I'm going to move safely. My focus changed. Um, and I was like, I don't I don't need to move with a large group, especially. So, you know, it just. Yeah, I, I yeah, I can. I, I, I definitely I definitely um, feel you feel you on that um, in every aspect. Um, Everything you said, I definitely, you know, can, can roll with. So you make the shift from the activism into the book, uh, in the books, okay? You, how did you, did you just feel as though you just needed to reach the children, you know what I mean, with, with your start from like the ground level and up or what, you know, what was the, what was the, the, the shift? So I used to have like one of, one of my aspirations is, to deal with like young ladies on a certain level. So I started a teen book club for girls mm -hmm. in Oakland and it did very well, but I was funding everything. So I was a little bit limited. And then as luck would have it, right as I was actually moving to LA, an organization decided they wanted to help me, but I was already leaving. But it just kind of whet my appetite. Like, okay, I really like being able to go in and dissect these books with the youth. And so I could help them you know, make sure that they, they were getting the right perspective from the material. So again, going back to motherhood, um, just, you know, not able to stay home and homeschool my son. I was like, I have to find a way where I can still give him the information I want him to have. So that's when I started doing the book. So I realized that there are plenty of parents that are in that situation where they would like them to know about a Garvey or just even how, how things came to be, how we're in this situation. And especially so that they could come up with innovative ways for us to develop more. So I feel like 
there's not a, a strong enough connection between historical information and development. And to me, that's almost the only reason you should be sharing that. You know what I mean? So if you are going to show a child, you know, how we got in this predicament, it's to show them. So, you know, I, this is my part in it. You know what I mean? So this is what I'm doing to get us out this situation. From you, I think that you're really good at X, Y, Z. So this might be how you can fit in. But there has to be, you can't just put them in front of a television and have them watch a documentary about the enslavement and kidnapping of our people and then have them go off. Because then they got to come figure that out. But like, okay, so because we deserve that, because we're dumb, because like, why did that happen? You know what I mean? These children, they're people and they got real questions that usually make a lot of sense. But the problem is that like, a lot of adults will expose a child to something, but they don't have the conversation to follow it. How do you feel about that? What questions do you have? What did you think was interesting? Why do you think that happened? Like you'd be amazed some of the things that our children can come up with. And you find them, you know, very interesting, but motivating as well. And they help to keep you on your square because they're still, they have that pure innocence still. So they're like, okay, well, how come, you know, how come we don't have parts where we have our own statues like they have? And then we can look up to them and be like, whoa, you know what? That's a good question. We should have, okay, you know what? Hmm, maybe that's something we could work on. But, you know, it has to be an all-inclusive act. for First of all, for it to even be called a community project, which... Honestly, so many times. I mean, not so much here in Atlanta, to be honest, because I do see a lot of community work. But in a lot of places, I don't really see any yeah, common too. unity. They just loosely use the term community, mm -mm. but there's no. really no communalism that has taken mm -hmm. place. It's like, are you just talking? You're just trying to explain. To cover space. You know what I mean? It's like people don't understand. There's a difference when you're trying to call a demographic of people a name. So that you can say these people who identify as yeah. <laughs> and then people who are actually in a community mm -hmm. and what a community does and what a community addresses. So it's like we, I feel like as a people, we're very good at with the common unity when disaster hits, disaster strikes, Katrina happened, mm -hmm. like we get together, mm -hmm. we get it together. But it takes, it's like we get together when we need, but not when we want you know mm -hmm. what I mean? We we got each mm -hmm. other's back when it's needed. Like, no, for sure, we show up for each other. I feel like mm -hmm. nobody else does. Like, we don't give our, ourselves enough credit for that. We really I come agree. through and make it happen. But when we want to, when maybe, you know what I mean, it's it's inconvenient. But if we would do it and, and, and study the course, we would see some development. But it would take, you know, a year, two, three years. We'd be like, oh, man, three years? Like, you know, we don't have that kind mm -hmm. of vision. For the most part. And I mean, there's some that do, they don't get the support right. they need. Almost everything we're saying we need, somebody mm -hmm. is doing that, but not getting the support. Not getting the support. And a lot of people just, like you said earlier, is distracted. You know, they got the nine to five going on. They got, you know, all this other thing. So it's like the priorities only come, the priority, they only pri prioritized and coming together in parts like disasters because you know what I'm saying you you got you 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 know you at that point you got to make something happen you right, know what right. I'm saying and, because you know what I'm saying something something and that's even by design you know what I mean marketing focuses mm -hmm. on, on us in particular so that we are all spent around and mixed up with our priorities and then we're stressed out so when you're stressed out then you deal with escapism mm -hmm. and there's so many different forms of that and then most of them mm -hmm. are detrimental to our development yeah. So then we just kind of stay in the same place. Families, you know, broken up, I, if I, even it, in the first place. Like, there's. It, it was interesting to me because I remember um, going to class once, a couple classes, and they were talking about, like, um, the, I guess, symptoms of PTSD, mm -hmm. right? You know, I'm sitting there listening to this man. Uh, talk about this. And I'm, like, I'm like, wait a minute. Most of these symptoms I, I have just from being black right. in America. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. real talk. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm, just, I'm gonna tell you that blew my mind because I'm just thinking about, you know, I'm just thinking about how 
just how it's just a normal part of right. life. The stuff that we have to deal right. with that other people don't have to deal right. with. You know, even the stuff that you talk about, especially that's a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? But the interesting thing as well is like when I started traveling the world, I didn't feel the same. I always tell people that in America, I feel like a I felt like a, I got a big gorilla mm -hmm. with, a, with a target on its back. That's mm -hmm. what, a giant gorilla is on your back with a target. Mm -hmm. Every day I walk outside, that's why I feel like in America. Mm -hmm. You know, but I went to, you know, different places and, you know, the, the, the it's small into like a small monkey, sometimes chimpanzee and then a, a small monkey mm -hmm. with a target on his back, but not nearly as much, mm -hmm. you know. I went through my life just thinking that this world is just like that, mm -hmm. no matter what mm -hmm. you go to. It took me traveling for me to realize that that's not the right. case. And that blew my mind, you know, because right. you know, unless but, you see that and you experience it, you know, and then... Uh, right. America, like, our, the form of enslavement that our ancestors dealt with here in this country was unlike, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, in terms of the menocide that yeah. the people, but it, it wasn't just our ancestors that went through that menocide. It was people who were enslaving the people as well were buying into this nonsense. That we really, you know, were less mm -hmm. than. We really weren't as intelligent. We really didn't have these accomplishments. We didn't have this. They really believe that. They really pass that on. So mm -hmm. and we're talking in, in adverts. Mm -hmm. Sealy, um, the mattress company, I saw an, an old advertisement they had with um, a, a young girl who was like picking cotton and stuffing stuffing it in a bag as a part of their, their advertisement. We're talking about the best sleep she ever had on the softest cotton. And this was during that time period, which alone, I mean, imagine the cost of, of an advert back then. You know what I mean? But it was just, mm -hmm. it was as, as American mm -hmm. as apple pie, as our ancestors say. So we definitely are going to feel different being born and raised in this country and the experiences we're going to have in this country. And even other people... Mm -hmm you know, who have melanin, who travel here, experience a different reality that they're mm -hmm. not used to. Yeah. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's something we yeah, have to I, teach uh, against. And that's I hear that a lot, part too. of why I write the books. Mm -hmm. It's because I felt like... I had a very, I had a real interest. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was just going to say oh, go ahead, that go ahead, I good. think a lot of us have gone through you know, this own rites of passage where we come into ourselves and we learn history yeah. and we learn these resourceful tools. And it's like, man, if I would have known this when I was a youth, if I would have grown up knowing this information, what I could have accomplished. And that's why <laughs> I decided to publish yeah. on a larger level so that these children now have that opportunity. So it's, it's not even just teaching them, you know, about that person, but it's, what's focused on the words that are used the the way that um the the things that the tragedies they had to overcome are worded in a way where they are relatable in a way so they're like i can also mm -hmm. live through tragedy you know what i mean if something has happened or something does happen mm -hmm. to them it's not going to break them because they're going to at least have someone that they can recognize like okay madam cj walker went through a lot of things too she lost both of her parents so, and she went on to become America's first recognized self-made millionaire and still mm -hmm. cared about other people. Because mm -hmm. then we're now talking about, you mm -hmm. know, things that we don't get into, like in, in psychology, which, let me, see, let me see my daughter say. Oh, okay. So, you know, the psychology that comes <laughs> with dealing with racism and other things. So you feel maybe you become a narcissist. Maybe, you know, you're just super selfish. Maybe... You know what I mean? All these things. So in the book, I try to word things yeah. in a way that promotes good character. So it's not just the straight up story. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I want you to recognize mm -hmm. this woman could have focused yeah. on herself, but instead of just focusing on herself, she started a community um, recognition program where she gave recognition to the agents who did the most community service opposed to the most sales. So then now as a class, we can talk about why do you mm. think that is? And like, oh, wow, because, you know what I mean? Opposed mm -hmm. to just like, man, she's super yeah. good with marketing. And yeah, that too. But guess what? Let's talk about this character piece. Mm. So we can start actually installing mm. the things that we need to see in our wives, in our husbands, in our future grandmothers, in their mm. character. 
Because what we're going to do, just rely on television. Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, that's not even a tool that you yeah. use to raise a child. It should yeah. be reiterating or you can use it mm -hmm. as a basis of like, so don't do that. Or yeah, you see what happens when you do the right thing, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't, you know, they, they become babysitters, mm -hmm. especially in our generation. Like you were babysat by the Cosby's yeah. different world and Martin and, you know, all the mm -hmm. other shows that came on. There wasn't so much, you know, someone <laughs> sitting and, and supervising like, wait, whoa, whoa, what did they just say? Oh, no, 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 no. Turn that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's interesting because um, I think about like your experience, you're saying, and you know how they always say, even dealing with melanated beings in this country, okay, like you take these people that genealogy goes back to be some of the greatest people on the planet Earth, right? You bring them into you bring it, bring them into a a um a country, and you start mixing them all together. So you got these melanated men and women in the hot sun all day, working. You know, you know, you breeding them together. You know what I'm saying? Granted, it might not be studying much, but physically, you know what I'm saying. You're making, um, you're making super, super, super people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like just through. Us, just, us, just through us coming together, coming together from that same time, and it's interesting. It's just because well, you, you know, know the other people the they they couldn't survive. You know I mean? They couldn't survive. I, I yeah. believe it was said that they couldn't live past mm -hmm. a year or two under those conditions because mm -hmm. initially, you know, there was exactly. the European exactly. criminals that they had them come and like, okay, you could work your way for freedom, mm -hmm. but they couldn't do yep. it. So then they they noticed they those with it. melanin yep. were able to withstand it. The gift and the curse. Yep. And then you take a you take a byproduct of that you take a byproduct of that and stick them into the Olympics like Jesse Owens mm. and look what happens. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the reason why I'm saying all of that is because of steel sharp and steel. You know what I mean? And for us, what we went through in that time frame, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna come out, we're gonna come out on top. You know what I'm saying? Um mm. we're gonna come out on top with because we Shield because the uh, steel sharp and steel, so we're gonna we're gonna come on top to move on to the next you know next paradigm. Um, something else. So, activism book. How did your spirituality like what what led you up into your spirituality of today? So, like what's your spiritual right. journey from? So you know, I I always felt a little I don't know I didn't I didn't feel a full connection with Christianity or you know I, my mom she may have visited a few Catholic churches and I just I had a lot of questions you know from from early on I spent some time being raised in Brooklyn so I was definitely heavily in the church uh, my family there is really big on it and you know it was more so about the family aspect not so much about the information, but when I was in California, I was really listening and I was just mm -hmm. like, hmm, why would God let this happen? Why would that happen? Da, da, da. So really didn't get any answers, didn't feel a real connection until I was introduced to Islam. And when I was introduced to Islam, then I felt like this missing thing that I've been wanting, you know what I mean? This structure and this connection to God, I finally had. And it made me feel like more complete as a woman and a mother. And I felt great about it. I was ready to change my name. You know, I took, I did actually take my Shahada. Um, I still had some questions, but it felt good. You know what I mean? I felt good. So as I continued to study, I came to an elder and I was like, you know, I want to change my name. I've been wanting a name forever. You know, that's part of your journey, your rites of passage. When, you know, you are enlightened, you got to change your name. So I was like, okay, finally I'm getting a name. And he was like, no. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, still no. How? Why not? So he said, because, you know, the people who introduced this system were some of the first invaders of the continent of Africa. And he was like, and if you are, you know, going around being called this name with your revolutionary history, it makes you look ignorant. Like, you don't know that. And I was like, but I mean, I want to pay homage you to this know. feeling, yeah. this newfound discipline. You know what I mean? This, 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 this 
this level of, of spiritual consciousness I feel like I have, that's what I'm, I'm paying homage to. And he was like, no, they're not, that's not what other people, they're calling you that, they're calling you that name. They are thinking that, you know, your studies haven't reached that level. So no. And I was, I felt like lost, even more lost when, you know, when, when I was going to church and I was just like, wow. And then here's my son with me. You know, my eldest son decided he wanted to practice. First of all, he loves Muhammad Ali. So he was like, oh, I'm down. Yes, we are Muslim. You know, can I now be Ali? Like, he was like, he's in it, in it. So I had to come and tell him like, yeah, so I, we aren't practicing anything now. Um, I don't, I don't know what this looks like. <laughs> you know, I don't know how we're supposed to pray. I don't know who we're supposed to pray to. And we were just in limbo. And I was just like, man, this is like the worst feeling ever. So I was actually looking for a book for, I was looking for a book to do research for another children's book that I was working on. And so I started having conversations with someone who said they were selling the book. So then, you know, he, he just, he gets at me out of nowhere. I was just like, Hey, you know, what, do you know how to speak in any, any African languages? Like it, it don't even mention Kiswahili, like a real African language. And I was like, no, like, do you know how to cook any dishes? And I was mm. like, no. And he was like, in, in like, what is your spiritual system? I was like, I don't, I was just like, man, hold on. He just laid it on me. And he was like, but you call you like, you're Pan-African, but you don't know, no African, none of this stuff. And I was like, whoa. I was like, holy crap, this mm -hmm. is crazy. I was like, man, all the stuff I've been through, you know, as a revolutionary, like that never even crossed my mind. I was like, okay, wow. So I was like, okay, I'm interested. Mm -hmm. So then he offered me a reading, right? And without even explaining to me what the system was necessarily, he was more so telling me what the results were going to be and the information I was going to get. Like, this is the information you need for you and your children so that you can be successful, you know, in life, in business. You can have a little more direction. And I was like, okay, I'm with that. So, you know, I sent him the money. And um, right after he messaged me and said the work was done, these messengers just started like using people to come to me. So for example, my son, you know, mm. he had got in a fight at school and it was probably like the second or third. And I was like, what is going on? So we're out shopping and this lady who, who happened to be a Caucasian lady of all things. Um, and I say of all things, because like, she's completely not connected to this system as far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She grabs my arm and I just mm -hmm. look mm -hmm. and she was like, excuse me, you know, everything is going to be fine. You don't have to worry about your children. Your son is only fighting right now. He's going to be protecting you. Da, da, da. Like came with all this stuff, like downloaded. And then she just stopped and was like, I'm so sorry. I don't know where that Family. came from. She was like, oh my God. I don't want... And she was all confused. I was like, no, nah, that's okay. I was like, I, I do know where it came from. So I was like, well, me, I, I, you know, I told my son what I was mm -hmm. doing in terms of, you know, getting the reading and whatnot. So he was like, mom, that's crazy. Like, mom, I was like, I know, I know. I was like, yeah, okay, that was crazy. So then there was an elder at that time who used to be very, very flirtatious. And he used to tell me, you know, he was going to eventually help me to get my book in the hands of Garvey's son. And he just like, that was his way of reeling me in and, you know, just trying to say little cute stuff. So I was like, you know, I'm about to block him. I was like, because he really is just getting on my nerves. It's not going nowhere. So I was, of all people to be used, he calls mm. me and is like really on some elder stuff. And is giving me this information. You know, my daughter wasn't really like speaking, speaking at that time. And I was right at the point where I was concerned and like, should I seek a specialist? And he was like, you know, don't worry about your daughter. You know what I mean? She's going to start talking any day. And I had never told him any of this. But he did exactly what that woman did in mm. the dressing room and just gave all this information. Like all the other questions I had, he answered. And I was just like, what? And, and it was all in one day and like back to back. And I was like, this is crazy. I was like, what is happening? So, you know, my son, you know, again, you know, that's, I, he tagged along. So he knew what was happening. And he was just like, whoa, mom, this is serious. So finally, you know, Babalao and I got on the phone for him to give me all the information. And I was just blown away at the details he knew that I never told him. 
And he was like, you know, so I removed this, this happened, that happened, and this is what the next move should be. So I'm like, okay, what is this system? Now I'm like, what, okay, what is this? Because I've now seen living proof of this thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm instantly not a believer, but a knower because there's no way you know these people mm. when you sent them to me. You know what I'm saying? So there's something, yeah. there's a higher entity that's mm -hmm. involved that's tapped in, and I want to know more about that. So he was like, you know, okay. So I end up getting what's called um, a roots reading. And so that basically gave me some background information about my ancestry. So I was like, okay, that was perfect because I have an aunt that's done some research anyway. So I was like, okay, I can kind of fact check a little bit. So he sends it to me. I send it to her. She calls me crying. Like, where did you get this? Mm. How did they know that? No, listen, she was like, there's stuff in here that she knew a little more detail about that she never wanted to mention um, because of like how we have indigenous blood in our family. You know what I mean? She was like, she's mm -hmm. something she didn't want to bring up in conversation. Like somebody was a little loosey goosey. And yeah. she was like, that's how we, we end up having some Indian in our family. And she was just like, how is this stuff in there? Mm -hmm. And she was just like, oh, my God. And mm. she's heavily into church, heavily, heavily into church. So she was like, okay, I'm interested in knowing mm. because how? She's like, you know how much money I've paid and time I've spent to get this information for this man to be able to go and sit on a mat and come back and give all this information. So she was like, I'm going. She's like, some of it I'm not familiar with. She's like, but I'm curious. So I want to show your great aunt. She went ahead. She read it to her. She said she started crying and was like, what? Hmm. Who, who, who knew this? Where did this come from? So I was like, oh, and to my son, Samari, I was like, Samari, don't worry. I know, you know, we, we were practicing Islam and we were like, okay, what are we doing now? I was like, we, we have something. We have something very real, very tangible. And I feel like it's foolproof. So, you know, what I decided, like, as I've, I've always done, is to show my children, expose them to things, but let them make the choice. Cause that's a very personal thing. I don't feel like that's something you just tell someone you're going to practice, you're going to do. It has to be, you witness it and you, you want to be a part of it. You're like, okay, I like what that's doing for my mom, my dad, my sister, et cetera, et cetera. Like I want to be a part of that. Absolutely. Because it's going to require, you know, different levels of sacrifice. So if it's coming from a genuine place and it doesn't feel like work, so I was like, okay, continue to watch. I was like, because it's, it's involved, you know, it's not just wearing some beads. So started doing some, um, <laughs> you know, just a little bit of study and he didn't give me a whole lot. And I ended up actually meeting a Bible out in person, in person, locally. I just walked into a, a restaurant, saw the beads and I was like, Hey, you're a Bible out. And he was like, how'd you know that? And I was like, because I see your beads and the only one I've ever known, you know, he lives, I believe he was in New York at that time. I was like, he's in New York, but you know what I mean? There's some distance and I would love to get a reading from you. When he gave a reading and even referenced things that he did, they don't even know each other. I was just like, yeah, this, this mm -hmm. is it for me. Cause how, how? Yeah, so you just, yeah. you tapping into something and it just, the information is what it is, period. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, it just depends on which divine. If, if they really are true to the, to the craft, they're really connected, the information is going to be the same. Because the initial one, yeah. you know, we had a falling out. I wasn't interested in a relationship. So, you know, he decided to do what he could do to disrupt any other relationship I had. That Babalao knew that without me telling him that. He was like, oh, wow, this is interesting. Yeah, somebody put something on you where like you can't fall in love. Like, okay, people can like you, but you can't. I was like, how did he know? Cause I just sat there innocent, like, okay, just with my reading. And he came up with it. So I was like, once again, I was like, yes, this, this is it for me. Because how, how, how is that coming up? Mm. Um, and I just, I felt like a completeness ever since. I used to, to feel like someone, you know, kind of walking around with amnesia, things would be familiar, but I didn't know why, I didn't know how. And it ended up leading me into this tradition, this practice, this way of life. And then things started making sense. And then it's like feeling like 
I don't know, having it, you know, something to fall back on when you just don't understand what is happening in your life, what is happening in the world. I feel like comfort knowing if I really, really want to know, there's a way for me to find out. You know what yeah. I mean? I can, I can sit not, on the, not the dark I can anymore. find out what's you're going not the dark on. Anymore. I can just, you know, go with the flow mm -hmm. and just kind of use my common sense and, and figure things out, you know, on a certain level. But if stuff gets really, really deep and tricky, I can say, you know what? Like, I need some help. I need to see a specialist. And mm -hmm. there's just did, that did level you, of comfort and knowing that that's available. Did you start to... Um internalize more as far as what you could do as a person when you this all these did it you know did it open your mind up to, to, I mean, to your you know your true divinity i feel like there and it, and it continues every day where more and more dots continue to connect so i you know i've come to find out um you know i have like three different deities that i work with the closest and one of them is oh yeah so then, you know, knowing oh yeah, deals with ancestors, and then majority of my books are about ancestors, and then she's like the only warrior woman. And then I was teaching a gun class. I was like, okay, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like that's crazy. But this is since ever. This Not is a like it just started after I found out. You know what I mean? I can as I continue to go back and look at my history, I'll say, oh wow, this was always there. Okay. You know, I had an emergency with my daughter. And when I tell you, it seemed like this storm carried us to the emergency room in time. You know what I mean? And then to find, you know, oh, yeah, deals with storms. I was like, wow, yeah, she got that us. That's how we got there. Because mm -hmm. I was like, I feel like I woke up mm -hmm. and we were in, you know, in the emergency room just in time. You were there. And I was just like, man. So it definitely continues to, like, make sense on a very personal level. Um. I just, I feel like there's a path, you know what I mean? And it's it's easier for me to find out when I'm mm -hmm. on and I'm off the path. You know what I mean? There's more, I can mm -hmm. read more signs mm -hmm. and I can be more intentional about how I move and what I'm doing with that resource and with that connection. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause you, most things that are powerful are gonna lead you back to yourself anyway. And this tradition is no different. Mm -hmm. Unless someone's just trying to, you know, yeah. get some money from you. But they'll tell you your ori, you know what I mean? Which is yeah. like your third eye can really mm -hmm. lead you, can really protect you. It eye. can block mm -hmm. you as well, which, you know, mm -hmm. in, in layman terms, mm -hmm. you can, they, they tell you how powerful your mind is and you can manifest things. So you can manifest things that you don't want also. You can create a blockage for yourself. So, you know, having a tradition that mm -hmm. even has yeah, I'll always, practice for that. What do you say? Yeah, I always say, like, most of us, especially Black Americans that are introduced to, you know, European um, um, spirit, oh, not religions, I'm going to say, it's like when it comes to spirituality, we're like that hose. You know what I mean? That that's crinkled and just dripping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But once we get into the African system, that hose starts opening back up. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we can really start flowing. Right. You know what I mean? That's a um, people, and it's. I'm happy that you're able to tell that story from being introduced to African spiritualism, so people can you know kind of have an example how things don't work and it's just not you know. It's not right, spooky, right, 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 and it all goes back to ancestry right, as well, right, you know. Right, right. So, so here's my question: um, What you got going on right now? You got some more books coming. Mm -hmm. You about to start conferences? Yeah, you know, what and you got? I've, you I've always going? told people that um, the books are just one medium, one vehicle. So that's something that I think. Before I, I kind of put a limitation on myself, like, okay, I'm a children's book author. That's what I am. That's what I do. But I had these other aspirations and I thought they all had to be separate. So I'm always going through these like business name changes as I decide to accept a new type of journey. But it's really all connected. Like, I, I teach through different and I share through different mediums. So the books are one, you know, now having messages on t shirts, symbols on t shirts is another. I've been working on a documentary forever. 
So I definitely want to encourage people to go to elementarygenocide.com um, to learn more about that. But Raheem Shabazz and I are working on a documentary that deals with ancestors, of course, because like everything I do deals with ancestors. So these ancestors um, mm -hmm. in particular are from Africatown, which is here in America by Mobile, Alabama, and has an amazing story Alabama, yeah, yeah, that a lot yeah. of people, you know, we feel like will be once informed, encouraged by, and then there's some support that they need now also. So it'll be really timely. So I'm excited about that project also. So, you know, I learned through, I worked on some other documentaries and got more and more behind the scenes and found that I really have a passion for that. So I definitely would say that there'll be more mm -hmm. coming in that area as well. Um, more recently, I started working like the last three, four years, start working on some curriculum. So, and this curriculum looks very different than mm -hmm. the curriculum I was working on, you know, when I was actually in the African centered school where it's kind of comparable coloring faces brown. So opposed to doing that, actually structuring mm -hmm. from scratch something that our children can feel comfortable absorbing. Because what I tell people is dangerous all the time, especially in an African centered school or when you're homeschooling and you're using someone else's information, is it's one thing for me to send my baby to school and I've taught them you need to question these people's motives. You know, they're teaching you things to make you docile and a robot and to fit in their system. So, you know, you need to buck here, you need to, to use discernment. And so they're getting the information and they already have that discernment. Like, oh, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna leave that. Now, when I give information, right, because I'm mom, they're just going to absorb it. So imagine I'm reading from their book. So that's even more dangerous because now like their filters off. They're like, oh, yeah, she's reading it. So the children are just taking it in. So mm -hmm. that's a that's a serious issue mm -hmm. in African centered schools when they're not creating the curriculum or they're not getting it from a reliable, a safe source because they're like, OK, I need this to look mm -hmm. as professional as possible is what I, I hear most homeschooling parents. Like they want it to look professional. They don't want their child to fall behind, you know, with the with society standards of what it should be for third grade, et cetera, et cetera. So they end up emulating and mirroring exactly. what they're doing in the school, but at home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's so mm -hmm. like, well, what was the whole reason mm -hmm. if you taking them out of school then, mm -hmm. if you're just going to use all the same resources? Exactly. Because, but by design, we don't trust ourselves. We don't trust our knowledge. We don't trust what we have to give them. Exactly. But of course, mm -hmm. we can even we can outsource things. OK, if math isn't your subject, I bet you your brother is or your aunt is or someone else. You can find the tutor to supplement where you need. So if you do decide to go that you know homeschooling journey, you just have to really think of like it takes a village type of scenario. So, yeah, exactly. I've, I've, it's not it's not a one stop shop. Right. Sometimes you got to it's not a one stop shop. Sometimes you got to. Um, shop at different places right, exactly, to, to make exactly. it all come together. So I'm really, you know, you know, I, I enjoy yeah, it, doing it, that, um, creating the worksheets and the curriculum and mm -hmm. whatnot. So usually it's curriculum that that goes with the book, that's an aid with one of the books that I've written, um, which makes me feel good to know that they'll really get what I wanted them to get out of the book because it's being reinforced, you know, with, with the, the schoolwork. Opposed to you know someone just reading the book and kind of assuming what the point was. I think what you're doing is probably the most important thing for us right now, as far as raising children, and because we literally the only way we're going to get out of where we are now is we give everything back. You know what I mean? Just like you're saying, the education, the images, we got to give everything back and make our own, be completely self. Because you know always. You know, I, I I talk about this in my book. I remember like I was in fifth grade, right? And they told me I was a slave. You know what I'm saying? I was just, I still remember the day how that made me feel. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it crushed me. I, everything was cool up to then, you know? You know, but they told me I was a slave and I was just like, you know what I mean? I, you know, it just crushed me. And now older and just realizing that that system is made specifically to do that, you know, and I'm in that system, you know? You know, and you know what I mean? And why would you ever want to know that and put your any offspring in that same system? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That they're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 you know, it's it's insanity. Well, know? I mean, and the thing is um, you do what you gotta do 
right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you mm -hmm. are aware and you are present, so you supplement where you need to, then you can even utilize them going to school and, and teach them about society, teach them about the world. Because the thing is, to me, the worst thing you can do is mm -hmm. only homeschool, not only, I mean, you can homeschool them, but put them in this bubble where you're like, you're a little king, mm -hmm. you're a little queen, and they go to playground. Bubble. And the kids are like, what? What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? And then they're like, <laughs> what's, what's happening? You know what I mean? Like, it's balanced. So they need it's to balanced. know how to coexist with other people. They need to know discernment, mm, I agree. right? So they 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 still need to to be strong. They need to again be able to go out and think for themselves, so that they can't get bamboozled. Because I've seen children, you know, who grew up mm -hmm. in a bubble and then they ran and want to do everything. You know, Western civilization has to offer. They want to date those folks. They want to be like those folks because. You know, all that spookism just became attractive to them. And they're like, man, I really, I was missing out. Mm -hmm. So even for me, you know, if I've always offered for my children, hey, if you want your own little Christmas tree, you can have one. I'll give you the science on it. I'll give you the history mm -hmm. on it. But so that you don't get to an age yeah. like, oh, I never had this. Oh, my God, it's so special. I wish I had this. And then you just dive into it. Mm -hmm. They get into it and they get over it. Like, oh, that ain't mm -hmm. even no big deal. That's what everybody. OK, cool. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And then they can choose. No, nah, I don't I don't need it. I don't want it. Or okay, no, I, I feel agree. like I having it. OK, it's fine. It's up to you. Because yeah. it's not That's a big deal. It it's okay. really not a big deal. Balance, right? You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's not exactly, exactly. Um, it's all about balance, right. right? You know what I mean? It's all about balance because you know, it's all about balance. Even dealing with them because if they can see what they're learning in school, but then you just correct them right. on our end. Right. Well, you know, Again, you, this is how it really present, went down. If you're present, if you're <laughs> you know, that's what they saying. But, sit down yeah. and talk. Hey, what happened? Let me see. Let me see your schoolwork. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let me see. I want to see the completed schoolwork too, not mm -hmm. just your homework. No, what are they showing you there? Because yeah, you're yeah. literally trusting your children showing? with exactly. who can be considered complete strangers. Like when the idea of like school mm -hmm. as we know it today was a concept, people had pitched for us. It was like, mm -hmm. no, who are you? You're going to come here and take my kids for hours yeah. Yeah, exactly. and teach them, well, I don't even know mm -hmm. you. I don't know mm -hmm. you. I don't trust you. Now yeah, it's, exactly. it's so traditional. We don't even think about it. You you may never meet yeah. their teacher. Never in your life. And it don't mm -hmm. even cross your never, mind. Yeah. It's being odd or weird. But they are absolutely being influenced by this person. Hope You hope and pray they're not a creep. But you trust the institution who put them in there so much that you're just like, if so, you know, it'll be dealt with. It's. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, being aware is very, very important because you, you yeah. can be shocked at what some of these teachers might be saying to your child. But you know, if you yeah, show up and I you agree. show out, then they'll avoid yours. Trust me, I had that. I had to learn in California. Yep. I, 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 I say like I'm kind of spoiled here in Atlanta because of the demographic. All the schools, you know, that my daughter son have uh -huh. gone to is predominantly <laughs> black. The teachers, so I just have different situations. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been Atlanta's really different, nice. boy. I'm telling you, that's been really, really nice. Yeah, Atlanta is, you know, Atlanta is the exact almost. I tell people all the time it's the exact opposite of what demographic in which I pretty much, you know, grew up around early in the early days. You know what I'm saying? And I get spoiled too. I, I love right. it. You know <laughs> when we first but, um, relocated, all right, well, she, my son and daughter were like looking around the grocery store, and like, Mom, like, oh my God, everyone in here is black. They were like the manager, the everybody, the the shop, the customers. They were like, "Oh my god!" Everybody, yeah. <laughs> I mean, now you know yeah. what I mean. It's, it's. I remember normal, I walked in my. But, yeah, that was funny. It's normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. now it's normal. I so I laugh. Other people were coming. Atlanta. They looked around I'm like, "What? What's the big deal?" And then I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah, yeah. yeah. What you looking? What, what, that, that ain't that. Yeah. That ain't that. Right. I remember walking to my first job in Atlanta, like first real job, and I just remember going onto the the floor, and I think I saw possibly two Caucasians, right? And it was probably a good fifty people in it. I was just like, and like back where I was right, from right. Was in, in Richmond, oh, like sure. they they some businesses was getting yeah some businesses were getting trouble because they weren't hiring right. enough black folks, right. so they had to push black right. people in the door. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was like I was just like. 
what in the world? It's like somebody flipped the switch. But um, they flipped the black switch. <laughs> and to me, it's good because like the children can but, um, focus on something else. And especially in terms of their studies, if there's mm -hmm. something they need help with, I think that they don't have to be as shy or reluctant to speak up because they're not speaking as like the only person who's representing yeah. all black people. And be like, okay, if I need help in math, it's because black people aren't good in math. They're like, no, there's other people in this class. Some of them are good. Some of mm -hmm. them need some help. Yeah. I need some help. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's a, a very... Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. a more comforting situation you know what i mean when you're you're learning you're just representing yourself you're representing your family but you're not like you got the weight of all i, I remember yeah i remember my oldest son he literally didn't um see a non-melanated um professional like dentist doctor until he was 15 wow. years old and that was because she no, and I'm, I'm I'm dead serious too, um, and that's because she was a filling at the doctor place that was owned by a black doctor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's Atlanta for y'all folks. If y'all if y'all haven't been here, that is the way the ATL rolls, right? You know, you know in saying? California, so, one of the worst. You, know you got options down there for sure. But I mean, to me, it, it changes the aspirations of the children. There was a workshop I participated in in California, mm -hmm. and. I asked the children, like, okay, what kind of business would you want to own? And all of them named things where they would be like a manager, but no type of no entrepreneurial anything. Like it just it wasn't tangible to them. I'm like, you can have your own dentist office. Like you don't have to manage a dentist office. You know, what would you want your chairs to look like? What would exactly. you and the idea was just like, oh my God, really? Here, because you see that on a regular basis. You are thinking about being an entrepreneur. Oh man, you know what? Mm -hmm. Not only would I have my own dentistry, but it would look like this. It would be innovative in this way because you've not you've not only seen it once, you've seen it multiple times. And so now you're like, oh, how do I even raise the yeah. bar? So that's something I really appreciate about Atlanta. Is I feel like, especially you know, my daughter who's 13 now, her idea of success is different. It's not as limited yeah, because it, it, she's seen different. more. She's I know, used to more. It's, it's been normalized. Yeah, yeah. I used to see I used to see these big old houses up here in Richmond. I was going, I mean, in, in one outside of Richmond, mm. Virginia, you know, was you know ninety nine point nine percent white, right? In the nice rich neighborhoods, you know, all that stuff. And like, I came to Atlanta, and I'm driving around like off Camp Creek, and I'm just mm. like, wait a minute, these houses are bigger than the houses I saw up here and they all black you know I still I still you know it you know it you know of course I'm used to it now but it, it was it did take me a while to get used to you right. know what I'm saying it just it gives you the flexibility so to focus on you know something what I'm saying? like else. I tell people all the time yeah. something else yeah I tell people all the time like even dealing with, you know I know this doesn't happen for everybody but just my personal experience even even like with police yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying like in law officers yeah. you know what I mean like you know, I had, you know, only had a couple encounters with a few jerks that, you know, were melanated. But, you know, I would say, like, at any encounters I had, it wasn't like right. that. You know, I talked to them like I right. talked to them, you know. You know what I mean? And, you know, you just keep for real with them. You know, most of the time they'd be like, all right, you know. So, so that, yeah, that, you know, that was a, um, that's Atlanta, y'all. Y'all haven't been there, yet, you know. Atlanta is a, a, a beautiful spot. A lot of a lot of energy down there that you might not experience in other places, especially in America. But um, all right. Is there anything, any parting words you want to give the folks? Um, visit my website, raptingculture.org. Um, you can keep up with everything on, and you can, you know, check out anything that's available for purchase. There's lots of t-shirts on there, six different books. So love to see your name on there. Please repost it and tag me. Yeah, I have a 15 month old now. Today. So I've, I've got bags now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I've been hearing him yelp upstairs. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine that. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Um, oh, and I went to the website so this one, today when I was doing this. This is not for me, but this actually, I wore these uh -huh. tights. This is from Choice Family Firearms. There's some super nice tights. Bam, you know that's right up my alley. Oh, that's tight. That is right, tight. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's so, tight. 
definitely check them out. Go to their IG. Oh, I like that. Go to their website. Hook them up. These are my favorite tights now. You guys thought I was playing when I posted them the first time. These are my favorite tights now. They're super comfortable on top of being cute. Well, that's what's up. So, yeah, definitely want to give them a shout out as well. And don't Amen. forget to go to Elementary Genocide. All right, well, I, I want... Well. I went to her website today and I was like, what do I want to buy next? And, you know, what, you know, is very beautifully Thank made you. and has a lot of good information. So good job on that. All y'all, y'all see it right there, wrappedinculture.org. Please go there. Support and I take sister. after she's amazing So if you can't decide, you know, you're like, oh my God, I want so much. Not a problem. I take Afterpay, so it'll be broken up into four different gotcha. installments. <laughs> and if you are interested, That's if you it. felt you um, like, you know what, when you heard the spiritual journey, that that's where you're at, then I can also plug you with getting some awesome divinations as well. So inbox me, and then I will forward you to mm -hmm. one of the best bubble levels there are. And... Um, <laughs> I may be a little partial, but yeah. So I would love to connect you with the right person. I wonder well. why. So yes. So inbox me and I'll cool, forward cool. you. Cool, cool. All right. Well. Yeah, that's it. Y'all got the spiritual mm -hmm. game. You can get your, you know, you can get your books. Mm -hmm. man. A one-stop shop, mm -hmm. right? Yep. All right. Cool. Well, it was a pleasure Thank having you. For having once, me. You know, once you get some more things popping, I would. Yeah, of course, of mm -hmm. course. Um, once once you get some more things popping, please, okay. I'd love to have you back down there. You know, down down the road a little bit, we could talk some more talk. Right, but um, that um, that's all I got on this end. Thank you very much, Polka Dot Robin Podcast. You know what I'm saying? If you haven't, please subscribe and follow. And I, we out of here. <laughs> Bye. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Thank you.